Welcome back, everyone, inside the Journeyman Boxing Studios, another edition of Double Jab Radio. Don't forget to check us out online at journeymanboxing.com as we continue to talk the amateur ranks. Rich Canoon is again on a Wednesday, and it's week three of the famed Daily News New York Golden Gloves Tournament. It's the 88th edition, and I'll tell you, a great fighter in his own right, a pro, a Golden Gloves champ, and now the director of the Daily News New York Golden Gloves Brian Adams joins us for a couple moments. And, uh, Brian, it must be that time of year as we are in full swing week three of the GGs. And uh, it's always good to touch base and talk to you. Nah, first off, thank you, Rich, for doing what you do, keeping the amateur boxing program, you know, in, in the faces and to the minds of everybody. So I do appreciate you for that. Yeah, and the feeling's mutual, and I know you are running around, so that's why it's great that we get to uh, steal you for a couple moments. And, you know, the one thing... I know it's week three, and I know the the tournament is really starting to heat up. And um, I think the beauty of the Daily News Golden Gloves is that r- really, not only do you get marquee amateur boxers, but sometimes you see guys that might and girls who might get that buy, who might advance in the finals, who pull off some upsets. But ultimately, it is a stage where 10, 15, 20 years from now, we saw it last year when we had the pleasure of calling the action ringside. You know, you got guys who might have won a Golden Glove back in 2000 or 1985, and they still walk around and they wear it with a lot of pride. So do the girls. And uh, just talk a little bit about that and how great it is that there's always that involvement year in and year out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You touched on it there. The the Golden Glove, the Golden Gloves is, you know, the most prestigious, the oldest and world's largest tournament, the most prestigious. So in order to be an aspiring boxer in New York, um, to have that sense of achievement, you need to win the Gillings Golden Gloves. It's more than just inside the ring because the tournament is so rich in history that people from all walks of life, when they see you just in the street, for that one night or for that specific time you are everybody's hero you know you won something that everybody always dream about and everybody is aware of so you, you become the, the neighborhood hero and the go home which is tough in the lab in the city um communities you know you want to get teased you want to get a bunch of things while you're traveling that road of the tournament but once you win it and go back home all of the teasing stops and the praises begin. And I know uh, this year uh, the tournament goes on with, uh, I believe, a heavy heart because you guys um, unfortunately lost, uh, again, one of the pioneers that meant so much to this tournament, Brian. Yeah, Mr. John Campy, who kept this tournament alive. And the tournament was going, when the Daily News was going to um, throw the towel in on the tournament, Campy came up with a few interesting um, angles to keep the tournament alive. He instituted the thumbless gloves for safety, and he also instituted the random drug testing, which we still do, just to show people that this tournament matters to the inner city. You know, these these kids are drug-free. They are interested in achieving something outside of what they see, which is their neighborhood day-to-days. It can't be passed away you know, two months ago, and it, it's been very tough. But, you know, the memory lives on. Everybody still appreciates what he did for the tournament, and me personally. Now, I know it's hard for you to answer this question because I know as director, you want to see every uh, young boxer out there put on a good show. But we've seen throughout the course of history so many different Amis on that stage really – just shine and we saw last year i mean obviously when you talk about female boxing i mean the young lady from hell's kitchen christina cruz exactly who is just it's just she she, it's on another level um of, of boxing but are there a couple uh fighters out there when people go week three week four as the tournament progresses that maybe you can kind of give them a little idea hey keep an eye on on this fighter going forward hey absolutely um uh, I'm privileged to the fact that I can sit back in and admire and watch a lot of these athletes. Um, some of them evolve and, and develop, and some just natural talents. 
But, you know, we have Mitch and Christina Cruz, who, who won eight titles. She's going for eight, her eighth title. Um, so each, each year, it, it comes down to who's going to dethrone her. And it hasn't happened yet. But it's fun to watch because she stays focused mentally, which is extremely hard to do when you're dominating. They focus mentally, and then she continues to win. Then you have a young man by the name of Brian Sabalo, a uh, welterweight, 152-pound guy. Yep. Who is, who is probably the cream of the crop when it comes to the, the guys. Have a young kid named Christopher Colbert, who was new to the senior level last year. He won a tournament. Um, it's just really, really refreshing to see young, young people, 17, 18, 19 and 20 years old, putting it all into achieving something and being considered as a platform of, of greatness when it comes to amateur boxing. In a couple of minutes with Brian Adams, does a great job. He's the director of the Daily News, um, New York Daily News Golden Gloves. This is the 88th edition. It's amazing. Paul Gallego, many, many moons ago in the sports department, sports editor said, you know what? Instead of doing ice skating or bowling, uh, do whatever you want. Let's try boxing. And then, uh, boom, from there, it is world renowned. Um, I want to ask you this. I know uh, week three, there's a lot of stuff going on, and, and I, uh, I believe that um, – uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, I guess you can say, great guys involved in this as well, uh, world-renowned fight commentator Teddy Atlas. I, I believe tonight set the stage for this evening where it's going to be. I believe it's a private, uh, private function, and 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 Teddy's going to be doing stuff tonight or tomorrow. I just want to get an understanding, clarity for the listening audience as well. What's going on with Teddy? And I know he does a great, a uh, lot of stuff with um, Atlas Cops and Kids. Yeah, well, well, tonight the New York Athletic Club, we are doing um, a private event just for the members. It's an exclusive member club. They contacted me four years ago about bringing the Golden Gloves there because a lot of their members are boxing fans. So it's been a home run since we've done the Golden Gloves there four years, and I really enjoyed doing it there. Class Act organization and Cedric Jones and his team there. And then tomorrow night, the famous trainer, personality, um, Teddy Ellis. This will be his eighth year in hosting the Golden Gloves at Petrini's High School. Tickets are still available. Teddy does um, a red carpet type event where, it's a, where it's, um, you buy a ticket for the dinner, get a chance to meet all the celebrities who are in attendance at the dinner, pre-fight dinner. And then you have access to ringside seats for the fights. And this year with NBA All Star being in New York and Teddy working for ESPN, you never know what NBA players may be there to, um, tomorrow to see the action. But despite all the smoke and mirrors with the NBA guys and celebrities, people should come out and, and support Teddy for a couple of reasons. A, he is what boxing needs. He's a straight-up guy, tells it like it is, he's honest, and that's what people like to see in boxing. Too many black guys with people think their fights are fixed and favoritism, this and that. So when you hear Teddy talk boxing and give it like it is, he should be appreciated. So that's one. The second reason is he has a foundation, the Alice, Dr. Dittor Alice Foundation, where he helped those who can't afford any medical coverage, or those who got turned away from assistance by the bigger conglomerates organizations. Um, and he come out of his pocket each year and help people. You know, for instance, the kid had something wrong with his head. Teddy was able to get a special um, helmet made for the kid to walk around so he won't fall and bust his head open. Got a customized van for family to take him back and forth to the hospitals. Um, things like that. So supporting his his foundation and supporting his event tonight will go a long way in ensuring he can keep Dallas Dallas Cops and Kids gyms open, which he has four of them. One is that now it's in Brooklyn, and also you know to just keep supporting the kids in need, the families in need who can't afford it. 
Yeah, he does an outstanding job. And I, I want to echo your, your one sentiment where not, a lot of people don't realize where bigger TV personalities, broadcasters, a lot of stuff they do goes unnoticed off the side. People only put them under a microscope when they're on camera and kind of take everything under a microscope and, and uh, really don't understand. They, they can't really encapsulate what a lot of these guys do. And I know yourself and Teddy does a great job. Um, two more quickies. And again, appreciate a couple moments of your time before I let you get out of here. Uh, I had your buddy on about a week or so ago, Mark Breland, and we were going back and forth with the Olympic team. And I was making him chuckle a little bit, but who... Who, besides yourself now, and you got to take Mark out of there too, who was the best um, the best fighter you've ever seen, fought against, or has come out of uh, the New York Daily News Golden Gloves? Out of the New York Golden Gloves. Well, you said seen. Do you mean seen live or seen on tape? I'm going to, you know what? I'll let, you know, I'm going to give you a mulligan today. You can say live or on tape because I have a feeling I know where you're going, but go ahead. Well, uh, honestly, in the Daily News Golden Gloves, the best boxer that I've ever seen live is a guy by the name of Lionel Holcomb. Um, tremendous, tremendous talent. Four-time Golden Gloves champ. I think the kid won the tournament one year with one hand, just using his left hand um, in three fights. Real, real tremendous. Now, on tape, uh, I mean, listen, Mark Breland is my brother. He's probably the closest guy uh, I am to in the sport of boxing. He's really uh, like a brother to me. So I got to go with Mark because when Mark hits you with that right hand, it, it was good night, Irene. But anytime I mention that to old timers, they always tell me one guy would have beaten Mark. Howard Davis Jr. They said Howard yep. was just so fast, Mark would have never hit him. So, and then Howard happens to be a friend of mine as well. Um, and I see Howard about that as well. But I mean, his record speaks for itself. Well, I don't think you can go wrong with either of those fighters, uh, yourself included. And again, uh, before I let you get out of here, uh, set the stage one more time for tonight, week three, uh, the 88th edition of the New York Daily News Golden Gloves. And again, Brian Adams, director, does a great job, does so much of the in the trenches and the grunt work that it's, it's it goes, it really is unappreciated, but you keep up the great work. But you kind of set the stage again for tonight and then tomorrow with Teddy and then going forward. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, tonight we will be at the New York Athletic Club. It's a private event, so it's sold out um, due to exclusive members. But tomorrow night, Petrini High School, on Staten Island, the Dr. Theodore A. Atlas Foundation is hosting the Golden Club. Come out tomorrow, get a chance to see some nice boxing. We have the 123 pound open division going, which is a very, very um, popular division filled with Golden Gloves. Just come out and support the tournament. If you miss tonight or tomorrow, you can always go to our website and check out the um, complete schedule for 2015. It's us backslash gg and check out the schedule. And please just come out and you come to the fights. Come over to me and say hi. And again, uh, Brian Adams, who is just like Teddy Atlas, he calls it the way he sees it. As I found out first and foremost about a year ago doing Broadway boxing <laughs> ringside with you. You do a great job with Broadway boxing as well um, with those guys and uh, SNY. Brian, it's always uh, great to uh, catch up. You know you have an open invite anytime to jump on uh, board Double Job Radio. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate it. And thank all the listeners for supporting you. All right, Brian. Be well. Good luck with the rest of the tourney. All right, so some great insight, great stuff as always from uh, Brian Adams. Does a tremendous job with the New York Daily News Golden Gloves, the 88th edition of the Golden Gloves. It's amazing, some of the fighters. And he mentioned uh, one, uh, uh, Christina Cruz, uh, certainly continuing to make history uh, inside the ring and perhaps with the Olympics right around the corner uh, in the Olympics as well. And he mentioned uh, Teddy Atlas, who does a wonderful job, not only as a commentator on TV, but does so many great things with Atlas Cops and Kids. Uh, in the community, and he mentioned the events going on this week as well. So we appreciate a couple moments with Brian Adams, as always. Great guy. Absolutely great guy. Uh, real quick, just uh, breaking news coming into our Journeyman Boxing Studios, Double Jab Radio. Uh, we have just learned that uh, Noemi Boski will take 
on Nadia Feliciano. That is going to be a March 13th bout. That's going to be March 13th at the Alacard Event Pavilion in St. Petersburg, Florida. We've confirmed it, and we've uh, actually just broken the venue as well. It, it, I mean, honestly, this is going to be the toughest test for Noemi. She's 8-1-2, uh, a couple knockouts, top rate of band weight in the U.S., four-fight win streak. Um, and uh, she just texted me that she's uh, very excited to face Nadia Feliciano in Tampa March 13th. Um, she also said that she's been up against the best in a bigger weight division, and she is preparing for a big challenge, certainly counting on the support from her city that have uh, been her backbone through her boxing career. And again, uh, Noemi is a 31-year-old native of St. Petersburg, Florida, fresh off a dominating performance against Chantel Cordova last December. She moved around well, dictated the pace. She stepped up to competition her last several bouts, and she's going to have her hands full. Feliciano, 7-6-3. and three. Her record is very deceptive. She's been in there with some very tough competition. Uh, yes, she's dropped her last two, but they were against Shelly Vincent and Heather Hardy, respectively. She came in as the IWBF Bantamweight World Champ against Hardy and was really uh, just simply outworked by Shelly Vincent in last July. So it's a good matchup for the 26-year-old native of the Bronx, New York. And I just got a text from her manager, um, David Selvin, who also manages current IFBA World Flyweight Champ. Uh, Eileen Ozaweski and David said uh, on the record, this is a good fight for Nadia to get back in the win column. Uh, Noemi's a talented, good fighter. This should be a good fight at 118 pounds. What's interesting too is that Noemi uh, has shown she can go to distance and win it on the scorecards. I'm hearing some talk that she might drop to a lower weight class, uh, potential title fight at 112, which is an absolutely stacked. I mean, you talk about a stacked division at 112, Ava Knight, uh, um, uh, Melissa uh, McMorrow in that division alone in the U.S. So that's certainly a stacked division. All right, folks, we're going to start to wrap things up here on another edition of Double Jab Radio. As always, special thanks to our sponsors, Casanova Boxing Gloves, Victory Boxing Gym in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and of course, the Atlantic City Pound, Atlantic City, New Jersey, the AC Pound, always making a difference. Everyone have a good Wednesday night. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Double Job Radio. As always, to our friends in Spain and Latin America listening to us online at www.journeymanboxing.com. Oh, mercy para nosotros, amigos que nos escuchan en España y América Latina. Gracias por tu tiempo. Follow me on Twitter, Rich Q on Q, as well as our photographer, Shere Shugogi S. Shugogi on Twitter. Finally, remember, it's not the destination, but the journey. You should enjoy it. Thanks for joining us on another edition of of Double Jab Radio on a Wednesday. And as always, we'll talk to you next time. Ringside.